All right, so we are, we are underway big time in the book of Colossians. And let's start with our uh, question and answers. So we've got last week's questions that I want to uh, see what kind of answers you guys got for these because these were some not that loaded of questions. But question number one from last week, besides the greeting, what are the main themes of chapter one? The supremacy of Christ. Okay. You get one? Growing in Christ. Um, going in Christ, growing in Christ's character, um, given Paul's mission. And given Paul's mission. Walk worthy. Walk worthy. All right. Next question, question two. When Paul says in verse 11, you may be with all, that you may be with all power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What is he referring to? is proof that Christ has set us free. That is a good answer. Well, I think you're talking about fruit of the Spirit, but I had written down it was the same power that raised Christ from the dead. The, okay, so we are, we are on track now. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. That's what Paul is referring to. The Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us is what produces the fruit. And earlier on, I was confused about that. I thought we had to work more at having patience and having love oh. and having, you know, all of these things, joy and so forth. And then realizing that, oh, no, that's what the Holy Spirit does through us, through yes. his power. Yes. Okay. So this is kind of a little bit of an open-ended question. In chapter 2, what do we learn about Christ? And if you say nothing... To God help you, if you say nothing. His preeminence. His pre about his preeminence. He reconciles a fallen nation Ooh. to his father. Okay, so he reconciles. That he uh, is a ruler over everything, king of the universe. He has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light, and he rescued us from darkness. Yes. Um. I, I was reading it in my NLT, Okay. and I liked the way it said it, and now I don't know if I can find the exact place where. He has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. Wait. Oh, wait, get it. And he has more. brought you into his own presence. You are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault, which is, you know, amazing. Because we live our lives in sin, and just because he gave his life, physical body, mm -hmm. it means that we get to stand in front of him. We could have never done that otherwise. There you go. There you go. About love and understanding um, of everyone. It's so it wasn't just, you know, we had talked about originally, um, it was about the Jews having the opportunity, but, he, you know, he accepted others. Yeah. And, and so that's huge for me because it teaches us to love and understand everyone and, and learn to be tolerant and patient and, and to help them to develop. Mm. So. That's awesome. So we learn a lot about Jesus in chapter 1. So now we get to the end here, verses 24 through 27. Not that I was trying to guide you there, but I was kind of trying to guide you there. That Paul explains the mission, his, the mission of... Yeah, because grammatically that makes sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So Paul, all right. The mission of his ministry. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so in those verses, those three verses, Paul explains what it is he's doing, what his ministry is all about. Okay, what he's all about. Yes, back in, back in the sound booth. To make the Word of God fully known. To make the Word of God fully known. To the Gentiles. To the Gentiles. I had I looked it up in Haley's Bible handbook. Okay. And it said Paul was not saying that the suffering of Christ is insufficient for our salvation, but the church as a whole cannot arrive at perfection till it has gone through suffering. Yeah. Paul was anxious to bear his share. Ooh. That's really good. That's man. So Paul, his mission is to preach Christ to the Gentiles. 
And remember we, when we talked about this, we look at this in the book of Acts. We had Paul, the artist formerly known as Saul, okay, who had a very, uh, very specific mission before his relationship with Christ was to deliver scrolls and persecute Christians, right? people that loved Christ. And he had a particular disdain for Gentiles. So when God knocked him off his high horse and Jesus spoke with him directly, he said, your mission is now to go and preach the word and make the, the, the full word of God known to who? The Gentiles. Yes, our Lord is not without a sense of humor. I love it. These are spectacular answers to these questions. You guys are soaking this in and learning it and knowing it and understanding it and able to regurgitate it, which is, which is incredible, which is incredible. It is to the edification of the Lord and to his body, which is each other. So now, as we go into chapter 2 in the book of Colossians, I got more questions for you. So, this week's questions. The first one is, what does Paul say in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments? He says something so that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. What does he say? The second one is Paul tells us in the second chapter of the book of Colossians that God makes us alive. How does God do that? And question number three. What is the problem or problems with having a faith based on human precepts and teachings rather than Christ? Well, I bet I've got some speculation and some opinions on that one, boy. But specifically, in the second chapter of Colossians, Paul gives us a warning. And he says, hey, there's a problem with having a faith that's based on human precepts and teachings rather than being based on Christ. And what kind of problems do you think you're going to run into if that be the case? 